Right, hello and welcome to the penultimate day, day 11 of the Pi Hut advent calendar. Let's see what we have under this box. We have a green box that contains another poly bag. In this poly bag, we have a mini OLED and four male-to-male -male jumper wires. Let's see what the web page says. Uh, Maker Advent Calendar, oh my god, LEDs, day 11. Welcome to day 11 of the 12 projects of Codemus Advent Calendar. Today we are playing with a really fun and useful component that you, you'll you use again and again in your projects, a mini I2C OLED display. Whilst only teeny tiny, these little displays are great for showing data from your project, such as sensor readings, scores, pin status, alerts, and other useful information. We're going to combine it, with, combine it with some components from earlier boxes to show you how handy these are. Let's go. Box 11 contents. One pre-soldered pre 0.96 inch OLED display with 128 by 32 pixels and four male-to-male -male jumpers. Today's project, we're going to display data on our OLED display. They're rel relatively easy to code, but they require the installation of a library, which we'll import at the start of a program. But we'll guide you through this. What is an OLED? Display in your box is an OLED display. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. You may have seen this mentioned on adverts for TVs, as many models now use this technology. It's a type of digital display technology that uses LEDs as layers of thin organic film between two electrodes. When electrical current is applied, the display emits light. Our code tells the LED where to show this light and when. What is I2C? I2C, sometimes referred to as IIC, stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit. It's another type of communication protocol. Remember the one wire from day eight, which allows us to allows multiple I2C devices to communicate to a controller like our Pico. I2C requires just two wires to communicate along with the 3.3 volt and ground for a display and has the benefits over some other communication options. We won't bore you with that just now, as it's not going to be relevant until you're much further along on your maker journey. To use the I2C, we need to import it in our code, which we'll show you in just two ticks. Construct the circuit. First, make sure everything is powered down and then disconnected. Well, there's the lead and there's everything disconnected already. Today, we're finally removing the LEDs and buzzer as input components, like buttons and sensors are more useful for this display. If you haven't already, remove everything so that you're back to a clean breadboard like this with just your Pico fitted. Next, fit one of your buttons, which is in here somewhere. Why is it doing it like that? Like so. And the OLED display like so and peel off the film Do you know I can't even get this off um, come on Aha, nope. There we go. Trying desperately not to get any fingerprints on it. Next we'll add our 3.3 volt connections. We need to jump, run. A jumper wire from physical pin 36.
over to our positive line, like so. I'm going to grab another brown wire, run it from our positive line, do our VCC, make sure the connections are secure. As mentioned in previous project, these things like to jump out. We want another one from there to one side of our button there. Next is our ground pin. Connect the first O LED labeled ground to the nearest ground pin on the physical pin 18 like we had before. Um, what colour we use? We use purple. So ground there. And it's saying pin 18, which is the third one up there. Now for the GPIO pins, which will talk to our Pico. Smoosh them out of the way, try not to break the connections. We connect the button to physical pin 11, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 away, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 away. Then we connect the ITUC pins so that the third OLED pin connected to SLC connects to physical pin 2 where's pin 2 and fourth OLED pin labeled SDA connects to physical pin 1 making sure all the jumpers stay in place otherwise this one will throw a tantrum it won't catch on fire but it would just will not work next we'll be using a light sensor from box 6 in our example today so we will need to wire that up so we use our mini breadboard and fit the light sensor and the resistor into the breadboard we, as we have below. The long leg of the light sensor is the one that goes to the left. And we want the black, brown and orange LED. which we don't have a black, brown and orange LED. Unless we look in the LED box, we find one there. But even that's not one. Isn't this peculiar? Because it's saying to use such a resistor, but we haven't got such a resistor. Hmm. Well, there's one. I'm not sure where it's come from. We connect that in there like so, and that in there like so, push all these out of the way, we don't want that one, we want, we don't want that one, we want a three way, so we use this three way, 
and connect blue there, grey there, yellow there, the yellow squeezes in there, the signal pin goes forward down. there and that goes two down in there which doesn't quite add up One wire on twenty eight. Thirty one and on physical six thirty six. Right. <sighs> now turn it so it, the OLED is facing you, making sure none of the wires have come be disconnected. Push everything else out the way. Right, time to install the code libraries. Right. Plug it in. After triple checking all your wires are connected correctly, last thing you want is a Raspberry Pi to go pop. Then we open Thony. Reset the Pico, good. Plug your Pico back into the computer's U sub port and make sure it's recognised. Then let's install what we need to make this display work. A display needs a code library package that isn't included in MicroPython by default. So we need to install that before we can start using this display. We will import this library when we write our code. Luckily, this is very easy to do and handle with Thony, so let's get it installed. The following may vary slightly depending on the type of computer you're using. Important. If the steps don't work for you and you see certificate errors or other messages, you may need to go install the library yourself. Go to this link. File. Save as. Save it. The downloads. Uh, pen, right, go back, then go. Well, it's saying to actually click on that link. Edit, copy, go back, open up Thony, paste, then we want to go File, Save As to Raspberry Pi Pico. We want to name it, be careful to name it just as it says on the tin, S S D. 1306.py all lowercase. We go OK. Then close that file. Then open a new one for your code. In Thony. Another option, it says there's another option here, is to select tools, manual 
packages so and you should see this box click on M-I-C-R-O-P-Y-T-H-O-N search right and click on there Store. And then close. We have another version installed there. So we have two versions installed. Activity 1, Simple Text Display. We'll start by showing a single line of text on the display. Of course, it will be the traditional Hello World, I2C and Display Setup. To use this, we need to import I2C as well as library we have just installed. You'll see this in a few lines along with other imports as always. We then need to set up I2C and Display, which you'll see on line 7. This includes the GPIO pins for using 0 and 1, which are SDA and SCL used for I2C communications. After this line, we have to wait around one second, otherwise I2C can get all stroppy and fall over. Next, we define the display in size, in pixels, and then the type of driver chip it uses. Our display uses an SSD1306 driver with a resolution of 128 by 32 pixels, which is referred to in line 13. That's all set up out of the way. Displaying the text. When we want to display something in the display, we want always go through the same process. Clear the display, define what contents we want to show on the display, push the contents to the display. If we don't clear the display every time, it will write new content on top of old content, which makes a big jumbled up mess of characters. Not good. Our example shows us clearing the display with display fill zero. Then sending hello world with the display text hello world zero zero. And finally pushing this to the display with display show the code. We'll cover what the zero zero arguments do in the next activity, but for now, copy this over to Thonny and see for yourself. Right, create a new one, paste it. And main up pi. Right, and I don't know if you can see it, but there we go. Hello world is displayed on the screen. Activity two, multiple lines of text. Let's go one step further, adding more lines and changing the position of the text. But first, let's cover those arguments. You notice that there are some arguments zero zero after the text we pushed to the display. The first argument determines how many pixels across the display the content should start, the x-axis. The second argument determ determines how many pixels from the top the content should start, the y-axis going downwards. Our display is 128 by 32, so we have 128 pixels running across and 32 from top to bottom. In our example below, we've managed to squeeze three lines of text on by setting each one at a different height, which it was just a bit of trial and error. The first line is 0, the next line starts at 12, and the final line starts at 24. If we add more lines, they won't be fully visible. We've also moved line 2 over to the right by entering 50 for the first argument, again just with trial and error. Give the example below a try and then have a play with the argument values to see what changes yourself. Okay. Right, line one, line two, line three. Oh no. Okay, let's change that one over to there. 
that box will move her in line there. Try that. Whee! All the way over there. Okay. Activity three, the endless counter. Oh, hang on, scoot too far then. Small LEDs are great for displaying data. They can refresh quickly enough to show data changes at a very fast rate. Let's create an endless world kind of counter. To show another way of using the displays. When you come to make your own projects, things like this will be useful. We don't use any physical inputs here, just use a counter in our code that increases by plus one every loop. The code. A new problem, our counter is a number, an integral, but our fussy little display will only show a text, a string. So we need to convert our counter to a string every time we run the loop. Converting integrals to strings. We convert the, dis the counter integral to a text string using the following. Display dot text open brackets open brackets string open brackets counter close brackets close brackets zero twenty four close brackets. So instead of entering text in brackets like we did it in the previous example, we'll use string counter to turn our counter variable into a string for our display. It's otherwise quite straightforward, adding straight plus one to our counter at the end of every loop to continually increase it. You can play with the time delay delay in the while loop just to see how fast you can run. Oh. And in. And press play. And there we go. Increasing the counter on its own. Activity 4, the naughty or nice game. We're now going to create a game that decides your festive fate. Let's make a naughty or nice game which will tell you if you're on the good list this year if you're on the good list this year or not don't worry kids it's just a bit of fun we're sure you've all been good this year this project shows naughty and nice with a marker that very quickly switches between the two when you click the button it stops wherever the option the marker is at the moment you at the moment your aim is to land on nice the code a simple example uses all of the usual ingredients Imports display setup button pins and creates a state variable as we've used before. We use these variables to switch between the two if statements with our while loop, but we don't but why do we want to do that? We want our display to constantly move the marker between naughty and nice. To do that, we have two statements which are triggered by our state variable being either 0 or 1. The statements start by showing the text with a marker at a different position. If the state is 0, the text push to display shows the marker naughty. If the state is 1, the marker is nice. Each of the statements also change the state so that the next loop, the other statement would trigger, which makes the jumper marker jump between the two. Each of the if statements then has a nested if statement inside it, which checks if the button is pressed at that very moment. If it is, the code inside it updates the display to confirm which option was selected, followed by a two second pause. So, copy it. Yay, finally nice. Oh no, I'm very naughty. Never mind. Activity 5. Show me the light. Showing sensor readings on your OLED is quite possibly one of the most useful and fun ways to put the display to good use. We're going to run an example where we continually check the light sensor reading and push this to the display. It can even show the percentage symbol. The example code below includes similar code from the light sensor box in day 6 and the same OLED display code. And we've approach and approach we've taken above. So most of this should make sense if you've been following along. The code, the same initial LED imports and setup code is present, and we've added the light sensor pin to set pin 
we've added the light sensor pin set up back in, linking it to GPI 26 along with the required ADC import. We then start a while loop, which takes a reading from sensor on line 25. Now this line does a lot of things, but once at once, so let's break it down. First, it creates a variable called light. It takes a sensor reading, it turns the reading into a percentage, it rounds the reading percentage to one decimal place. We did something similar on day six, but this time we're doing everything in a single line of code. We've avoided this so far as it can be a little overwhelming, but we're on day 11, so we think you'll be okay. Well, thank you. We then push this data to our display. We then use the first line of the display to show some simple text and the second line to show the reading. Just like the previous examples, we have ha we have to convert our light variable to a string to allow the display to use it. We also add the percentage symbol to the end. Copy the code over to Thonny and give it a go. From machine. And if you can see the value going up and down there as I wave my hand over it. But there we go. And that's day 11 complete. Aren't our LEDs just bags of fun? We've only just scratched the surface as well. There are lots of clever ways you can use these kind of display with graphics, fonts and other tricks. But we wanted to keep our activities relatively simple for beginners. You'll find a ton of resources and other examples on the internet that you can use. We even have our own graphics tutorial, which can apply to these displays too, with a few tweaks to the code. Let's recap. What did we learn on day 11? Today we learned how to wire an OLED to our Raspberry Pi Pro Pico, introduce the I2C communication protocol, learned how to install packages in Thony, learned how to code an I2C OLED display, including how to write text, how to write multiple lines of text, how to alter the position of the text, how to display sensor data on the OLED display, a few little tricks and markers. Reuse knowledge and components from previous boxes, such as state variables, converting integers to strings, nested if statements, light sensors and more. Okay, folks, we're nearly at the end of the 12 days. You can remove the circuit from today as tomorrow is entirely different time components. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. Okay, let's have a look at this graphics tutorial and see what this says. Uh, it uses a special module. So now we'll look at that another day. That's all for now. If you're not already subscribed, please click on the, the icon on the left to subscribe or click on the playlist on the right to view more videos. Thank you very much and see you next time.